Hey there, Mission Control. Well, we're back to uh, the expedition here today. It's actually kind of cool. Mars Expedition 1. Expedition 1. I love it when a plan comes together. Okay, and the reason we're here, kind of get out of the sunlight here. The reason we're here is because the isolator that I had in here definitely did not work the way that it was supposed to um, in this system. So kind of explaining that, it's kind of hard for me to explain it actually. You know, when I, so I went through uh, engineering and the one series of engineering classes I was really no good at was electrical engineering. Uh, I'm much more of a mechanical person. You know, I can I like to see and touch things, but electrical is much more, you can't really see it. Some people are just naturally good at it. I'm not one of those people. So uh, essentially what was happening, well, the isolator that I had did not work because um, it's, it's essentially a voltage divider. It, it took voltage coming from the uh, alternator and divided it uh, across two different batteries. And that led to uh, both batteries not getting enough volts to, to charge uh, in the way they needed. That's, that's one problem. It's not the only problem. Uh, second problem is the battery that I have in the back is not the exact same duplicate battery as this one here, um, which means that it, it creates a, a essentially like a feedback loop. If, the, if there's a voltage difference between the batteries, then um, electricity, amps, current will flow from one battery to the other. Uh, so if uh, this is, ha if my hands represent voltage, if this is a higher voltage, it goes to the lower voltage until uh, it's, it's balancing out. And what this can do is it can create a dynamic loop um, that results in what's known as battery runaway. Um, so when these things start doing this, when one discharges and the other's charging, the chemicals inside of the battery, they heat up as part of the process of gaining electricity. And uh, when that happens, when, let's see if I get this right. I'm, I'm not an expert on this, so I'm not pretending to be. I'm just trying to explain what I learned. Uh, when this voltage change starts to occur, one battery starts to heat up. And when that happens, it creates an oscillation that gets out of control due to the heat. As, the, as heat is released, more voltage is allowed to come in uh, like a like a dam bursting, if you will, uh, essentially, and um, this battery over here keeps getting hotter and hotter and hotter while it drains this battery, on, and if there's enough charge in here, this battery can actually explode. <clears throat> so uh, again, that's my rudimentary uh, attempt at trying to explain something I'm not really all that great with. Uh, you can go look up battery runaway and get the full details there, but it, it's basically something like that. Uh, in summary, it's Elbato, uh, and Elbato is Elbato. We don't want Elbato, so what we want to do, uh, we, we want to deal with both those problems. The isolator was splitting voltage, and then we don't want battery runaway, where it starts drawing too many amps out of the main battery here and creates that very dangerous situation, potentially dangerous. So what are we going to do about that? Well, I returned the previous isolator I have because uh, it really wasn't a solid state isolator. Uh, well, it was a solid state isolator. And what we really need is more of a relay. Um, so this one I, I found online. Uh, they use it for uh, stereo systems and such. Uh, so if you want to have a booming system, you know, with lots of subs, lots of amps, and essentially you go deaf because it's so powerful, uh, you put one of these in so that you have a secondary battery and you run your stereo off of that battery system and this will protect your main battery. It actually physically separates the circuit between the two batteries, which is uh, kind of what we want to do. But what it does when the, when the system is turned off, uh, it will not allow any charge to go to the second battery. So the alternator has to be on, the, the, which means the vehicle has to be on. Uh, to send a charge to the other battery, which is a good safety thing. And this is a fuse. It, this will allow 500 amps at 12 volts uh, going through. And if it goes over that, meaning there's a runaway situation, this will close, uh, protecting us from that. So this is a much more appropriate uh, relay for what we need to do. So uh, if I understand the wiring correctly, which I'm actually gonna read the instructions on this one just to make sure I've already read them, I think twice. Uh, must be made blah 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 with proper ring terminals. Yeah, okay. Yeah, we got that Okay, so what you got to do is uh, You bring your positive lead in here and your positive lead out These are two so that separates it and then inside of here is actually the switch so it'll connect them both 
uh, or disconnect them. Then you have a ground and you have a 12 volt on. So this 12 volt, uh, it's the one that lets us know if the, the vehicle is running or not. So we're gonna have to find a wire in the vehicle somewhere and connect to it uh, while we make all these connections. We're also gonna have to make a custom wire because we need to connect to the alternator. So I have some crimps and some wires that we're gonna use uh, to make that happen. So uh, this is the game plan. Uh, gonna, like I said, read some of the instructions here. Here we go. That's what we gotta do. So you can see we're coming from the alternator to the other battery, to the primary, and then from the alternator uh, to the relay. The relay is not grounded to the battery, which means there is no circuit going to that battery. Uh, and then you run through the relay and to the second battery. Now the thing that I have is I do have my ground on my second battery connected to the ground on my primary battery. So in a sense, I do create a circuit there. Uh, so I'm gonna check that to see if maybe there's a way I can make that better. So now we gotta take the cover back off so we can get down to the alternator again, which is not hard. It's hard for me, but there we go. Those off. Yeah, so we figured this out after we took it out for a few drives and realized uh, that battery's getting really, really hot and it actually started to vent, which is dangerous. So I quickly disconnected the battery when I figured that out. Um, and it's been safe ever since because it's been totally disconnected. But that's not a situation we really want to be in. So uh, happy that we figured that out sooner rather than later. Certainly could have been bad. All right, disconnect this, get it out of here. Move the air filter out of the way so I can actually get down to the alternator without having to be crazy. There we go. Okay, now we can get down to the alternator. Okay, so here's the positive lead on the alternator. So we gotta connect a positive battery cable to it. And then here's the ground of the vehicle here. So we're actually gonna use that to connect uh, these grounds to it. I think I'm gonna disconnect the uh, cable going to the second battery. We're gonna connect it to the actual vehicle ground now. Uh, check that all out, try to separate these batteries so they're not uh, in series. We're gonna have to make some custom crimps uh, here. So I actually have the crimp tool now. Hey, you know, if you guys are like me, any excuse to get a tool is a good excuse. Uh, so we have new tools. Okay. There we go. Get that out of my way. This is the crimper tool. And we have strong big cable cutters here. And we have our cables. This is all bought off of Amazon, and Amazon Prime is like awesome. So first thing I'm gonna do is just hook this thing up and do a test. We're not gonna get crazy here and just connect everything like I normally do without testing first. I have, actually, I found, I went back and I looked at my handy dandy uh, junk box and I actually have some pre-made cables already. Um, slightly smaller gauge but it should be fine. I think this is four aug and this is two but they're battery care. No five. Yeah this is five. This is four so this is just a little bit bigger. All right so I'm gonna get this all hooked up and we'll come back I'll show you what I got. There's the click. That click is the relay switching, which means it turned on like it's supposed to. Okay, I got 13.9 volts going to the back battery, 13.9 coming in. Okay, so we go to the back.
All right, so we got it all hooked up. Now, uh, I didn't show you everything. It was kind of hard to get some shots. Uh, what took me longest is you have to find a 12 volt accessory line in the vehicle. And what that means is when you turn your key, uh, what is it, two clicks, uh, the, uh, the power will turn on so that the relay knows that power is on at that point and it will open the relay or close the relay so power will flow, close the switch. Uh, and then when you turn the key off, it opens so that power cannot flow. And what that means is your battery, your starter battery will never drain and you'll never get a, a feedback loop uh, in the system with that runaway. Um, and because it is a 500 amp relay, if it starts to detect a current flow that's too high, it'll also open and stop the runaway uh, from occurring. So I just have the relay sitting right here right now and it needs to be mounted up. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go get some tools and I'm gonna figure out, I think I wanna put it up on the firewall in the back there. Uh, so get some tools and I'm gonna let this run for quite some time. We're gonna keep an eye on the temperature of the battery in the back and its voltage to see how it's doing. All right, well, uh, I've been going back and forth for a few different projects that need to get done at the same time here. I just got done wiring this thing all up and I'm letting it run for quite some time. Wanna make sure there's no issues. I ended up moving the uh, relay back into the battery compartment where the cooler is at, so I'm going to show you that. And I just have positive, I have my ground in the back, alternator is just going to the battery like it's supposed to, and I found my accessory wire uh, and connected it all up. So let me show you what's in the back. Okay, so we have our inverter, our secondary battery, and then we have our relay. We have the uh, negative and the positive coming in from the engine compartment. We have the negative running to the, or the ground, I should say, the ground going to ground, and the positive going into positive, and then we have our uh, ignition signal here. Uh, I've tested it, everything seems to be working fine. Like I said, I'm gonna let this run for quite some time, make sure there's no issues. Battery's just a little bit warm, but nowhere close to where it was, and it was pretty, pretty discharged pretty low. The inverter's sitting right now with 12.9 volts going across it. Uh, so it looks, looks like we're in a, a nice spot, but like I said, we'll do a long test here and see how it does. In the meantime, I'm gonna go up and check out the 3D printer. I think my parts that I've been waiting on today as part of my other project should be done. So I'm gonna go check that out and let you guys see how that looks. Uh, and I'll report back in the future on this thing, but I, I'm hopeful, prayerful. God, please bless this thing, let it be done. So I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, be sure to give us a thumbs up and hit subscribe. Don't forget you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and on Patreon. In the meantime, this is The Real Martian. Out.